I'm here at Stanford Medical School with Morgan Thies and Dr. Laura Backrack, and they're going to uh, uh, teach us some things. Okay, so what are we going to learn about today? I'd like to talk about precocious puberty. It okay. seems to be on the mind of many parents these days. They worry that their child is developing too early. They worry their child's going to be too small as a result. They worry their child's going to get picked on. And they worry they might have done something wrong, fed the child the wrong food or exposed them to the wrong videos to cause this all to happen. Okay, so could we just talk about what precocious puberty means? It almost sounds like they've done something too soon. Is that, is that correct? Well, it's exactly true. Um, the normal process of puberty in a girl, we mm -hmm. think, used, we used to think, started around the age of 10 with a little bit of breast development. And about six months later, the girls would get a little bit of pubic hair, and around the age of 12 and 3 quarters to 13, they'd get their first period. Okay. In boys, we used to think the process was starting a little later, at about 11 and a half. The boys would get some enlargement of the testes. They'd get some pubic hair about a year later, and by age 15 or so, they'd be mature. We have a definition of what's precocious uh, when there are signs of puberty before eight in a girl. Okay. Or before nine in a boy. Okay. So eight or less. Less than eight in a girl. Would be precocious. And that's for the breast development, which happens for first. Any sign for of any puberty. Sign. Okay. The breasts the pubic hair or the periods would be okay. precocious if it happened before the age of eight in a girl and in a boy mm -hmm. before the age of nine. Okay. Now this has become a little bit controversial because there was one very large pediatric study that involved over 17,000 girls oh. that found that as many as 25% of African-American girls would have a sign of puberty before eight, and as many as 7% of the white girls had some signs of puberty before age eight. But we're still basically using these guidelines, not to say this is definitely abnormal, but this is something we're going to evaluate if we see signs of puberty before those age landmarks. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of variability. It's kind of hard to know on any individual case whether it's, it's normal or not, but we have to have some kind of threshold for which we're going to work someone up to make sure that everything's normal. You hit and on a is... really important okay. word, and that is the variability. And a lot of this variability uh, is determined by genetics. Okay. So part of what we always need to know is the timing of development in the family. So right. when did mom get her first menstrual period? When did dad get his puberty and growth spurt? So that's part of it, is genetics, and mm -hmm. we need to know that, take that into account. If mom had her first period at 10 and started her breasts at eight, it may be perfectly normal for her daughter. If mom's periods were at 14 and her daughter has breast development at seven and a half, it's more worrisome. Okay. Okay, the second factor that seems to be contributing potentially is the overnutrition of our young people. Oh, yeah. And in the particular study that I mentioned to you, where they looked at over 17,000 children, mm -hmm. at least for the white population, they could explain the earlier signs of puberty as an association with a high body mass index. Oh, interesting. So it looked as if if you overnourish your child, you may speed along their growth and eventually potentially speed along their onset of puberty. I see. Now this did not hold up um, as an association in the African American population, so there's other factors going on there. But that's something that we take into account. But the bottom line is the child um, may present with some signs of early puberty uh, mom or dad get worried, they go to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician has to decide what's going on. Okay, now, just backing up a little bit, um, is this a problem? I mean, what's the problem with, say, a seven-year-old girl starting puberty? Um, or, uh, what are we going to say, like an eight-year-old boy starting puberty early? I imagine there could be some social implications, as you mentioned, but what are sort of the things we worry about? Well, 
That's an important question because it comes up not only how far do we go to evaluate them, but how far do we go to treatment, treat them. So one of the concerns parents have relates to their final height. Okay. So if they start their growth spurt early in life and close it off early in life, are mm -hmm. they going to cheat themselves out of some final height? Right. So height is a concern. Okay. okay. And its impact really depends upon how young the child is. A three-year-old going into puberty is definitely going to end up short if we don't do something. Okay. A seven-and-a-half-year-old girl is probably not going to be altered by uh, this in terms of height. A second concern is definitely what you brought up in terms of a social concern. Parents worry the child may behave in an older way or may be treated mm. uh, in a way that they're not quite ready for. They may get unwarranted attention from mm. people because they look older. Right. And there's even potential concern for abuse, mm. sexual abuse. Right. So those are usually the parental concerns uh, for why they bring the child in. The other concern they have is often, what am I doing wrong? There are a lot of questions about should I have fed my child organic food? What about mm. the soap I was using? What about the soap operas my child was watching? You know, they're really concerned about something they might have done. Mm. And they worry about these additives in our plastics, in our teeth sealants, etc. They worry about evils in our environment. Okay. So things that you address in, in the visit that you have with them are definitely some of the the concerns that parents inevitably have about what, what they could have done differently. Exactly. We start out assessing in a sort of a systematic way. The first question we want to know is when did this all start and what did they notice? And it's really important to break down the signs of puberty because different hormones contribute to the different signs. For example, in a girl, if she's presenting with some body odor, some acne, and some pubic hair, but no signs of any breast development, that leads mm. us down the road to worry about what we call her androgens or mm. her male hormones. If a girl comes in with just breast development, but none of the body hair or body odor, we think, aha, she's been exposed to estrogens. Oh. And so we get a lot from the physical exam in terms of thinking what hormones to go after. Okay, so even though the definitions of precocious are just any of these um, you know, different phases of development happening too soon, the combination that you see is going to direct what you think is going on with them clinically. Exactly. Okay. It'll make us more or less worried, and it will take us down one avenue or another thinking about what could be wrong, okay. what level of abnormality in the hormone system is at work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Just uh, curious. So what, what are the most common diagnoses that you give to people coming in with their kids that are concerned for precocious puberty? The most common diagnoses are variations on normal. Ah. There is a condition called um, isolated premature adrenarche, which is a fancy doctor way of saying the adrenal glands producing their hormones, we see pubic hair, underarm hair, and acne. Um, we also can see isolated breast development in little toddler girls that's mm. not concerning. So that but, would just go away? Or? Yeah, typically mm. that begins between six months and two years and goes away. Okay. But even within the more full-blown cases where we're seeing the breasts and the pubic hair in the girl or the enlargement of the testes and the pubic hair in the boy, where it's full-on, full-blown puberty, mm. um, it may be idiopathic or not pathological. We I think see. that in girls who develop fully, 95% of the time, even if they have the full puberty, it's idiopathic or not pathological. Whereas in boys, about 50% of the time, there is pathology. So the condition mm. is less common in boys, but when it occurs in boys, it's more worrisome. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it's less common for boys to have any signs of precocious puberty, but when it does happen, you worry more. Exactly. Because it's most, more likely to be something bad. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So I'm guessing as an endocrinologist, um, once you've sort of ruled out the normal things, then you start thinking more about uh, sort of what's going on in terms of all the different hormones that are controlling these things, which maybe is something that will talk about in a different lecture. Exactly. Um, is there any other sort of general things that you wanted to address when just talking about 
I think the general advice I would give to a parent if, if they see signs of puberty um, in their child um, before eight and a girl, before nine and a boy, mm -hmm. they should at least question their pediatrician about it. Um, and the pediatrician should do a complete exam. And the other factor that needs to be looked at carefully is growth uh, because a child who's truly in puberty will have a growth spurt. Um, so those are things that parents can be aware of at home and I think it's important um, that the parent ask the pediatrician about it um, if they're concerned. Okay, well thank you so much.